In this demonstration, we will see how we can optimize the performance of a hydraulic actuation system. We have a model of a hydraulic actuation system in a backhoe arm. A control system adjusts the position of a spool inside a valve to track a reference signal. When we evaluate the design in simulation, we can see that it is well within the requirements for the force the actuator can provide, but it is not meeting the requirements for tracking a reference signal. We need to optimize our design so that it meets each of these requirements. To do this, we will use Simulink design optimization. We will apply optimization algorithms to parameters in our control system. The optimization routines will ensure that the final design meets the requirements that we have. I will now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is our model of a hydraulic actuation system connected to a three-dimensional mechanical model of a bucket arm. When we run the simulation, you can see in this 3D animation provided by Simscape Multibody how the system works. As the cylinder extends and contracts, it angles a bucket. Looking at this scope, we can see that our system is not tracking the reference angle very well. Looking at this other scope, we can see, however, that the force applied by the actuator is well within the limits that we have specified. To improve this situation, we need to tune parameters in our controller. They have been defined as MATLAB variables. We could tune these parameters by hand. However, a more efficient method would be to use optimization algorithms. We are going to enable fast restart to accelerate the tuning process and then open up Simulink Design Optimization. Here you can just see that we have defined the requirements for our system, the reference angle that the system must track, and the limits on the force that the actuator can provide. Simulink Design Optimization can also see the MATLAB variables that we have defined and we have already set the minimum limits for these parameter values. Now we will run the optimization. During each step of the response optimization, Simulink Design Optimization will run the simulation, see how far we are away from the requirements, assess the, per the sensitivity of the parameters to the simulation results, and then change those values and rerun the simulation. You can see that the optimization is proceeding very quickly. Even if I knew exactly which parameters I wanted to change, I wouldn't be able to change them this fast. And we can see that it is doing a very good job at assessing the sensitivity of the parameters. As you can see, it is converging on a much better result very, very quickly. Even after this short period of time, we can see a very dramatic performance in how well the system is tracking the reference angle. And you can see we are still within the limits defined for the force. Right now, we're running these, this optimization sequentially one run after another. However, we could accelerate this even further by using parallel computing. We could run, send these set of tests to separate cores on a machine or distribute them across a, a computing cluster. You can see that in a very short period of time, Simulink Design Optimization has found a much better set of parameters that are meeting our requirements quite well, tracking the reference signal and staying within the limits that we have defined for the force the actuator can provide. In this demonstration, we have seen how we can use optimization algorithms to optimize the design of our system.